for 27 at 4.15 and I call our LDDA board meeting to order and um, to do a silent roll call. All right, um, and I do want to announce that we do have Longmont Public Media, right? You're recording us live, so that's great. And I do want to just say that this is a fully vaccinated facility. We've all verified that we're vaccinated, which is why you don't see us wearing our masks. So there's that. Um, let's go into board and ex officio member comments. Is there any comments from the board? Seeing no comments, on to the approval of our agenda. Have we had an opportunity to review the agenda? Any comments? I have to approve the agenda. Motion made by Kirsten, seconded by Joe. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> All right. Agenda is approved. Um, moving on to the approval of our minutes from September 22nd. Have we had a chance to review those minutes? Any comments? Questions? Motion by Joe or Jim, seconded by Joe. Yeah. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Minutes approved. Um, on to public invited to be heard. Um, anybody from the public that would like to address the LDDA board? You all have five minutes? Nobody from the public? All right. Okay, moving on to incentives. Uh, the first incentive we're here to discuss is the Elks Lodge. Um, they are here for a facade dip grant. Okay. Don't worry, I don't know if you want to set this up or if you want me to. Can you hear me? Yeah. Lodge. They wanted to do some facade upgrades on the um, ballroom and we're looking at windows and some painting and some other things. And Al graciously came to us and said, hey, take a look at this. And we said, well, it's, it's almost great, but we're wondering if you could do a few things. And he was um, very gracious to take that back to the club and um, made a couple changes, I think, to kind of keep some of the historic character that people have come to love, um, as, but still keep it uh, fairly cost-effective, so I think we made a few things um, there. But I'll turn it over to you, Al. If you want to talk about what you guys did um, on the project, that'd be great. Yeah, we, uh, we applied for our permits and got everything approved. Um, we started to remove the windows on Sunday, oh, two weeks ago Sunday. And I uh, got all that pulled out, got the new storefront insulated, double pane glass. Uh, part of the discussion to maintain that old look was to put the buttons inside the new storefront to replicate that look from 1962 and then to arch the top of the windows, which, which we did creatively on the outside with the, the metal storefront panels that you see there. And then on the inside, it's still uh, replicated with the old wood design, the old mahogany. <coughs> Back in 62, mahogany was easy to get, not so much anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it still, it looks wonderful from the inside. You still get that same look. And from the outside, you also see it. Uh, the storefront panels and the window, the, uh, the aluminum storefront and the metal siding panels all uh, match the, the look of the alleyscape of Main Street with that dark bronze aluminum. So it matches in very well. Um, but yeah, we got started on it and uh, proceeded. Uh, it seems like it looks really good. We've gotten hundreds of very good comments. Our glaziers put a little sandwich board out there and they've been getting a lot of comments. We've had great comments. Uh, we did the uh, Haunt the Mont. We were one of the stops on Haunt the Mont. And people just loved it. So we're really excited about the whole process. And with me here today is our uh, our lodge president and who's our exalted ruler, Mark Eaton, as well. Oh, you are? Yes. Yeah. When did that happen? This year. Yeah. Congrats, Mark. I did not know. We hooked him in there. All right, nice. Um, so, has anyone seen it? I have. It looks great. From the outside. But it does not. Yeah. 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 Ye
but we were just not. We're really excited. So I, I'm really happy that the arch has stayed because that really <coughs> makes that building look distinct and massive. It's definitely 1962, but it's coming back. It is. It looks good. Yeah. Super. So they have um, applied for $10,000 in grant funding. The uh, um, financials were approved by the Finance Committee. Um, so, yeah. Any questions, additional questions from the board? So for those of us that aren't familiar with the Elks Lodge, um, uh, number 1055, can you just give us some context on? Yeah, it's a national organization. That's a charitable organization. Actually one of the most proficient in the US for the amount of dollars that go towards the charity versus being donated. Uh, we've given over $5 million back to Longmont since it was established in 1907. Um, even during COVID, we did about six, 50 or 60,000. This year, we're already over 65,000. And charitably, in time, we do a lot with the Veterans Community Project. But not, so it's charity, and then it's just a private club um, that helps fund the charitable aspects of it. Awesome. Yeah, that building was in 1926, they finished building it. Yeah, the original footprint, the old lodge building was built in, or finished in 1925, actually, October 1925. And it's, Held up well, but uh, we're, we're working on the ballroom. Was our our first go at, at kind of advancing to, to do the rest of it to shine up the rest of the building as well. So. It's kind of a hidden gem. Like when you walk from yeah. uh, the outside, you don't realize how cool the building is yeah. until you go inside it. You know, and so we had the opportunity to let it a previous board yeah. retreat. And, it, it's amazing with the haunt the mod how many people we get to come it's like i didn't know this was here can can we take sure. a tour and, yeah the tours and, were great yeah we did a bunch of tours saturday night during our charity ball which also helps support the bcp and and you know it was, it was really cool it was a big event it was nice to open it up again cool well, good stuff the grant is for ten thousand. yep so i make a motion to approve for the grant of ten thousand. right Motion made by Wes, seconded by Joe. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries. Thank you all very much. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for working with us. And thanks for all you're doing. Thank you. Cool. So it's a public meeting. You're welcome to stay. However, you won't be judged if you leave. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and we do have our meeting that starts uh, yeah. here a little right. bit. So we are going to thank you all very much and keep up the good work. Downtown Longmont, we was here well. in 68. It's really coming along. Cool. Great to see the great work. Thanks. Okay, so next we have the Urban Field Pizza and Market Facade Grant. Yes, we're super excited. Uh, we have here to talk a little bit about Urban Fields uh, Pizza Market. So they are going into the ground level of South Main Station, which is very wonderful. Um, they came to us with um, a package. We uh, talked to them about retail conversion, the facade, and the sign grants. So their project is uh, going to, it's, it's a total just shell right now. So there's nothing built out they're going to be adding. Flooring, ADA bathrooms, fire suppression, utility upgrades, as well as two kitchen hoods um, that are going to go into the build out. And uh, so we have all of the information. We do have the bids if you want to review them. Um, we had to get a little bit more clarification, so we have them, so they weren't in the packet, but we do have them. But we've reviewed them all, um, they all look good. They are applying for a $15,000 retail conversion grant from us and a $10,000 facade and dip grant for $25,000 from us. The LADP has approved $7,500 for the match and their financials were approved by the Finance Committee. But if you want to take a few minutes and tell them about your concept and your build out and everything, that'd be great to your project. Well, I'm one of the partners in the Mountain Sun Pubs and Brewers back in Boulder. So we brought uh, Long's Peak Pub here. I don't know how long ago that was. A while back, <laughs> prior to COVID. Uh, we've loved the Longmont community. Uh, this is a side spin off of the Mountain Sun with a lot of Mountain Sun folk. And I focused in on Longmont partners. So all the partners, except I live in Boulder, but all the partners on this specific project are Longmont folks. And that was very important to us. We literally looked for space for 14 months. We looked at over 300 spots in eight different cities across the Front Range. And then I met Brian Baer, and he basically, I've had a lot of experience, I've opened a lot of restaurants, and I've had a lot of experience with neighborhood building. 
and he just struck me. Uh, it wasn't the best financial decision I probably ever could have made in my life, <laughs> but um, he piqued my interest because he had a vision to build a neighborhood. And I feel like at this point in my career, um, a vision like that is very attractive to me. So I basically put together the best team I could. It's cornered by a premier chef. He uh, graduated from the French Culinary Institute in New York City. He did the Michelin starred thing throughout Italy and Spain. Um, I got him to come back here and join the Mountain Sun group, and he's uh, spearheaded Under the Sun's Kitchen for the last seven or eight years. Um, he's my primary partner on this one. And then we brought in another guy from Longmont who is, he did Pasta Vino and a bunch of Italian restaurants in uh, Boulder, and he's coming in to do our cocktail program. And then we have an operations person who is also a Longmont native, or not native, she moved here long ago, but has a family here and is in restaurant operations. We um, are looking at this as a multiple, multiple source of opportunity for us. We want to provide needs for the community that Brian's trying to build. He has over 500 units down there. These people are going to need milk. They're going to need heirloom tomatoes. They're going to need chef prepared meals for home. They're going to need pantry items. Um, in addition to the stuff that we can provide to this market that we'll have for these resources for the folks that live there, we're going to partner only locally with a ton of people from Longmont and elsewhere. We're going to have three or four varieties of local meat available, frozen or fresh. We're going to have um, the honey guy from down the street who's got the bees in the backyard who's able to sell to us to, to have his product there. Um, and that's the idea of the market. Outside of that, the um, restaurant's going to corner on pizza. Um, it's going to have uh, New York style pizza as well as uh, deep dish pizza. And, um, and that's basically it. And the, the, the menu rounds out into a sort of Italian feel beyond that, which I think Longmont um, could use. And we're excited. Uh, we just went to a wonderful happy hour with Kimberly and everybody else up on, on top of the roof over at Maine. And we're excited to work with Wibby. I have relationships with everybody at Wibby and 300 Sons. And um, we have a lot of resources to bring. We're excited. And I think it's a good cool opportunity. We're going to talk about that happy hour a little bit later, so I'm glad that you mentioned it. It was so, I thought it was exhilarating. People were excited and I think good neighbors, good group of It's the reason we're here, is that so team. Yeah, that's fantastic. So, so what's your timeline for the build out? We are just about to break ground. Um, Permanent is just about to finish up. We'll either break ground on Friday or Monday. Um, we're looking to turn over the facility to me somewhere at the end of February. So if everything works out great, uh, March 1st opening, I would imagine maybe second week of March. So, oh, wow. That's fast. Yeah. We hired um, Faro Construction. They've done a lot of restaurants around here. So they're very familiar with Longmont and all the work that needs to be done here. First of all, I, I apologize. I didn't make the happy hour. <laughs> I had a previous commitment to the Longmont Chamber, and I really miss this that and I heard it was amazing so um, so we're really excited excited about this uh, could you maybe just highlight the value the upside this project's gonna bring in regards to job creation and sales tax revenue just comes you know kind of paint that picture for us yeah we I mean we came out of COVID up the street doing really well um, we're on par right now to do almost four million this year just out of that location um, I'm gonna ramp on to that Kind of energy that we were able to bring into Longmont. So I have projected sales right now out of the gates at 1.5. I'm hoping this facility alone can reach 4 million at one point. The way that we're really going to be able to add to the labor market is we, I took under, under the sun, does everyone know under the sun? It's the last mountain sun before long speak. Um, we restructured the whole company when COVID hit for obvious reasons. And one of the things I did was I took that catering arm from under the sun, which was very successful. Mm -hmm. And I took it with me primarily because we work at a uh, Lions mostly. Um, with weddings and so forth. So I'm already bringing in this huge revenue stream, which like our catering team this season to work in Lions was, I think, 20 big, which is as big as like a, a normal restaurant that you would have on Main Street. So I anticipate hiring 20 to 30 right out of the gates. My catering crew will be an additional 20. And um, so I think that's, that's significant. And in terms of sales, um, sky's the limit here. We're driving, we, we went technology heavy. So we're going to drive a lot of the sales right out the door, which is where things are trending right now. We're going to be available on all um, third-party delivery systems. We also have our own delivery system, not us personally, but through a company called Toast. 
And um, I th this it's a 2,700 square foot space, and I'm used to 5,000 square foot spaces, but I think we can really drive um, some significant sales out of this location. And I'm stoked for the two reasons. Number one, to be there for that immediate community. They need those resources if you want to develop this as a neighborhood, for sure. And number two, um, I believe that with this partnership that we started to develop at this happy hour and before, um, I think we, we can become a destination area. And I think Brian's right. He kind of envisioned Rhino as, from Denver as the vision for this area. And that's what I heard at the happy hour. Everyone wants to drive it in this creative new way that's going to make for a wonderful new neighborhood. And I truly believe we can take the industry and kind of move it down a little bit. And, you know, there's enough for everybody. How are you sourcing your employees? I mean, it's so challenging, it's, in this industry. We, we already have all our management pretty much hired. So, I mean, I've been in this industry on the front range for 25 years. So like that key initial group that comes open with you, we handpicked for the last year or so. Um, we also, the other thing we're doing is we have four owners. So they're all coming in heavy at the front. So this is not a situation where I'm gonna open this restaurant and I'll never see me again. I'm gonna work five management shifts a week at this restaurant. Mm -hmm. And all owners are. Um, so that's that. And I, the, there's an operations person with us as well known in Longmont that can draw um, talent like these employees. So I, I feel good about who we're, we're gonna be able to bring in. And we already talked about it. We wanna keep it to the local Longmont economy. We did that with Long's Peak. Every single person there is local. I don't think anybody drives in from outside of Longmont. And that's kind of our vision here because that's what works in Longmont. All right, uh, any questions from the board, comments? Right, so total project seven hundred thousand, and they're asking for twenty um, five thousand in grants. Do we have a motion? So, Kimberly, just real quick. So we we're looking at the balances. We don't need to move anything before we approve this. No. Thank you. So moved, Chris. All right, it's motion moved by Joe. Do we have a second? Second by Jim. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, motion carries. I'm excited, you guys. It's going to be fun. We've had a lot of experience with neighborhood buildings. So we've been waiting for this opportunity to do it from the ground up, and it does not make sense. Well, so that market is a top request. Mm -hmm. I know you guys love the market. I actually had a meeting, especially after LDDA support of the market, just to get yeah, <laughs> nice. more effort into the market. Yeah. <laughs> Request. That's great. Okay. All right, thank you. Same applies for you. Yeah, I'm gonna spot. I got other things to do. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. I'm looking forward to getting to know you more. When do you think the projection is booking date? I'm hoping for the for March first. We're we'll late March seventh, eighth, ninth, somewhere in there. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Yeah. Have there. a great night. I look forward to working with you. Yeah. 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 All right. Next on to the signage incentive funding discussion. Yes. We now have. Yeah, our signage is uh, down to $10,000, and we have quite a few um, people in the pipeline, which is great because people are upgrading and or you know, getting new signs. So, um, and we do have some money um, still yet to be allocated in incentives. So, uh, Delray and I were just hoping that the board could appropriate um, or direct us to appropriate $25,000 more into the signage account. Where does it? Um, we had TIF dollars. We took a big chunk of TIF dollars for incentives, and it's just kind of waiting there okay. to be allocated. So we can just ship that over. Um, so it's already been taken out of our bottom line, but just sitting there waiting to go to the right place. So, um, so if anyone is so inclined, that would help us. And um, and then we can always add more later if, if we go through that. I move to allocate twenty five thousand dollars for the sign. All right, motion made by Kirsten, seconded by Joe. Discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Fantastic. Cool. On to new business um, development update uh, easy contribution projection application. Okay, wonderful. Um, so this will be happy hour, just so you don't think we're just out drinking. You know, <laughs> <laughs> okay. We had, uh, through our Advanced Longmont 2.0 partnership, we are in the place committee and really had talked about what does this sense of place look like. And if you um, have been on
on the board for a while, you'll remember we did some planning charrettes for folks on the 200 block to really talk about what that would look like. So we opened up this opportunity to folks um, on Main Street and um, Kaufman and then uh, the South Main Station. We had about 25 people come and uh, we had different boards that they could fill out to talk about you know, what they wanted to see. Most of the people that showed up were new business owners, which was very interesting. The folks from DOG that will be opening soon. Um, there's a distillery that's coming that, that will be here maybe next month for incentives. Um, they were there. Paul and his partners were there. Um, there were some, Wibby was there, 300 Sons was there. Um, a realtor who is in J.D. Parker's uh, was there. Um, Cheese and Porters followed up with me afterward. I talked with Chris afterwards. There was a good amount of people there and just really the excitement and the energy about what's growing in this area and what they can do and their vision was fantastic. Um, years ago, that group said, oh, we should call it the slope and kind of embrace the hill and, you know, kind of make and that got the most votes, like the slope district or the slope or something like that is what folks were really liking. Um, when we asked them kind of what kind of branding elements do they want to see, extending the medians and the alleys were very important to them um, to kind of make sure that connectivity was there. Um, looking into some parking garages in the area, um, continuing with activities. And I do think, I, you know, I. I have to get a traffic control plan, but I think that, you know, there could probably be events that just close second to first that would, would be able to do some things. So I think there was some ideas of, hey, could we ever do that? What would that look like? Um, walking and biking paths, which again, I think the alleys would really help. More sidewalks, particularly around um, between kind of Kaufman and Maine. We've already talked about that. There's just really some um, connectivity issues looking at plants, lighting, um, and then when we ask them what you kind of think of, when you think of this, they think it's just too heavy traffic and exhaust that, you know, people really still speed through that corridor quite a bit. Um, some folks said like there's some just really bad facades and some buildings that really need some upgrades there. Um, again, speeds, uh, looking at that. In the future, they really want to see it as kind of a modern, urban type of thing. I think that even from a place making um, perspective, we don't see it looking like the historic core, but it has to have elements that connect it, but it can still kind of have a little nod to its industrial founding and, and kind of have that new modern look. So I think that's what the stakeholders also agreed, um, that you can have a legendary experience here <laughs> and it'll be memorable. Um, safe from speeding and, and um, oh, and better than Boulder. So that's really good. Um, and we did a regular SWOT analysis, but again, they really think that the strengths are there's some funky and unique businesses, um, a good sense of community, the weaknesses that there is no kind of grocery type food for uh, um, for tenants, um, lacks curb appeal, lacks parking, needs more artwork. Um, Oh, needs group activities like axe throwing or like a destination like fun entertainment type things that, that we could go a hookah lounge. Oh, that's a good one. Um, retail, there's a lot of dead space. There's kind of nothingness between buildings. Um, they haven't really kind of established their identity yet, but opportunities really connecting into the Greenway, uh, trying to figure out maybe places they could have concerts, um, making uh, Main Street one lane between 1st and 9th to help with that connectivity. Um, beautification, we have a Mia Wolf style art center. Um, and some of the threats were um, finalizing the water blade space. Maybe they mean if all the attention goes down to the steam area, I guess. Lack of parking. Um, lack of foot traffic in the mall. Um, so those are some of the comments. And then we did have a map where people wrote of things that could really be in the public realm that would help. So.
So it was a great start. It was a good vision. It got people, I think, very excited about the area. And we will continue. We want to get this group together at least quarterly. We want to see if there's things that we can move on and um, really start building a case for why some of these things need to show up in future budgets. So that's really kind of part of the reason why we started this. So yeah, it was a great, it was one of the better conversations. So, um, and Jackie Everson um, is on the place committee. She is um, a, a small partner in South Bay Station and she put it all together and it was fantastic. She did it just impeccable, so it was just great. So I just wanted to share that with you. Two things for the Kaufman Street redesign that we're looking at, um, that I know you're all aware of. The lighting. So there is question about the lighting. Um, the street lights will be, LBC will put in street lights the way they normally put in street lights. The thing that's different about this project is it is a raised and detached bike lane. So the bike is it in the street, right? And then the sidewalk's on the other side of that. And so the question was, to me, was, well, is DDA going to put lights in there to um, light the, the sidewalk, kind of like you have the pedestrian lanes here? And I said, I don't think so. I mean, this isn't our project. We weren't really, that wasn't on our radar. Um, and so I said, but are you not going to light the sidewalk? I mean, is that not going to be an option that you're going to light the sidewalk? So. Uh, they came back and said, well, LPC just does street lights and that's all they're going to do. Um, we set up a meeting for next week to talk more about it. One of my questions was, can the LPC lights have like a double, like a Cobra on each side? So then they can also light the, the path and that type of thing. Um, I did say, you know, we worked very hard to get out of the infrastructure maintenance business so I don't think that we will be owning and maintaining lights on Kaufman Street. Um, I said you know I would bring it up to the board if there needs to be um, you know see if you guys would um, be interested in purchasing the lights and then gifting them to the city and the city has to maintain them and, and do all of those kind of things so I just wanted to put it out there to see what you all were thinking about this as we move forward. I still make the case of, are you really gonna build this unlit thing? <laughs> I don't understand why you would do that, but um, would we play any kind of partnership and what would that look like? So. Um, so it's really the question of the lighting, not more of like how you clean up the mess. No, it's the really just for the together. Kaufman Street corridor, making sure that the oh, pedestrian and the whole corridor? Um, between first and well ninth. ninth, but for us we couldn't go past Long's Peak. Mm -hmm. You know, we are we have to spend our dollars within our boundaries. Mm -hmm. How come the lighting's not included in the plan? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I asked, yeah. And that makes no sense. I think they're just getting into the plan, right? And I wonder if, you know, when they normally do a street, it's just street lights, right? And they, and because your sidewalk's right next to it or your bike lane is in the street. So I don't, I don't wonder if no one really thought about how the, the detachment and if it would be light enough. But I raised the question of, I don't think it will be light enough because of how far away it is. I'm a lighting expert, though. I could be wrong. Well, now looking for the safety issue. Yeah, right. totally. Especially with that. Absolutely. Yeah. Sure. And I don't, I, I, I left it up to the parks gentleman, Timber, who does such a great job maintaining everything. I said to him, you know, I guess I was never envisioning that it would have to look like these pedestrian poles we have on Main Street. I don't even know if those would make sense. But if they wanted to just have one kind of thing to maintain, then I could understand why they would maybe want to put those on there. But I said, I don't know if there's even just an easier way to get it lit without having that type of infrastructure. So. You're going to have more pedestrian activity there. That's yeah. the whole point of this. Right. So therefore, it's going to be lit better. Yeah. Right. Right. So what was their answer? Did they not I think we're just starting to have this conversation. And that's why we have a meeting scheduled next week. But I wanted to see. I mean, I'll definitely still try to encourage for them to find ways to, to fund it. Um, mm -hmm. But would, I guess, would we be willing to take some kind of partnership in 
buying the fixtures to make sure it's lit if then the maintenance and everything goes to them, same as the pedestrian lights. I'm not there yet. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm not there yet. I mean, I'm like, I'm not saying don't bring it back. Yeah. But I'm not there yet. It seems ridiculous to, yeah. to put in a whole thing that is encouraging people to walk more, bike more, ride the bus more, and then not light it for people to walk more and bike more. I, I so. I asked, I said, well, don't you like the green ones? But they don't. There's no lights on the green ones. I didn't realize that. Um, so there is some precedent that those aren't lit, which I thought was interesting. Um, Kimberly, I think that if we start going down this road, then we need to talk to LPC because we're going to have rebates. They still are offering a lot of rebates, incentives to do this. I mean, there's a lot of cost savings yeah. involved. I mean, I'm still getting a lot of cost savings with upgrades for buildings. So yeah. I mean, they should have some skin in this too. So we all agree there's that it, we need lighting. Yes. Okay. So would we? What's our thoughts about entering some sort of potential partnership, giving Kimberly the uh, green light to entertain some of these conversations? Sure. I, I think if you throw it up and out there at the beginning, they're locked in. They're not going to let you out of it. I, I mean, I just think that that's so. Instead of us presenting. They need to come and present and say, this is what we're going to do. And if they want to ask for that partnership, that's on them. I mean, I'm just, because I think anytime, if you came to me and said, hey, listen, we want to partner with you. All right, you just, you just showing your hand to me in that, that we're going to, how long is that commitment? You don't know just yet. And what that's going to do. So I just, that's my thoughts on it. Well, and I think the original question to me was, if you want these lit, you can go ahead and light them. <laughs> And, and so, and that's when I said, well, and I met with the guy, I met with the LPC guy and he said, well, we'll, we'll, we'll do our standard lighting. And I was not thinking about how detached they were because I hadn't seen the plans yet. And I said, oh, okay. I said, yeah, your, your lighting's probably fine. And then after I saw the plans, it just struck me. And I, so then I called the project guy and I said, you know, I think I said, sure for the street lights but now that i look at this i don't think they're going to be enough and i said i think it is going to be too dark so i totally hear what you're saying jim and so i think what i will say is if the alternative the only alternative is we're going to leave this dark then i can come back to you and say this is where they are they're leaving it dark and then do we want to do something but what i will say even in these negotiations is even if i take it back to the board it would be a partnership in helping you fund the lights. We're not maintaining them because that's just not what we do, sure. right? I agree. Yeah, okay. There should be a plan. Let's find out what the plan is. Yeah, 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 find out. Works. Yeah, okay. Um, all right, good, that, that's the direction I need. And we don't need a vote or anything. I just kind of wanted okay. to throw it out there and, and just see where to start. Um, and yeah, I think we, we definitely need a plan. Um, and they always give me the lighting plans to approve, and I go, yeah, I don't. <laughs> this is I have no idea what this means. <laughs> I just like circles and squares, so I'll have to get someone smarter than me to make sure it will work. But, so what's um, the direction that we're? We're, we're not, not saying no. We're not saying no, but we need we're to not see saying yes. more information. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like a plan would be good. Yeah. 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 All right. And, and is there something like Kimberly? You suggested the two cobras mm -hmm. that don't let it go. Yeah. Okay. Something like that that can improve it. So yeah. let's have them exhaust every opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. So we continue the conversation. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the other part with this Kaufman Street project, um, the people on the 300 block of Kaufman are very, very, very concerned about the parking that will be eliminated overall as a result of the project. Um, um, so I've gotten, I'm, I'm very well aware of their concerns and how they feel, and um, so are the folks that are in part of the project. One of the things that we're looking at is our parking lots on Kaufman Street and our shared parking, uh, it's not shared parking, but where the Elks has three rows of parking and we have the rest. If 
if you've ever been in that lot, it has the worst circulation. Uh, it's very hard. You have to go yeah. through, and yeah. it's just well. very hard to get around. And um, what would really help would be if the elks, if they wanted to keep solely for the elks the one lane closest to them, but then enter into some kind of shared parking arrangement for the other two, and then we could really maximize the lot that would make more parking for everyone. Um, so that's the best solution, quite honestly. I wanted to just see if the board was comfortable with me entering into conversations with them to see if they would be willing to do it. What would that look like? You know, we could give them day permits. So if they're having a day event, we could give them enough permits that they could park there. I mean, based on their number of spaces, they probably would want some kind of lease would be my guess. I have no idea, but we also could do the maintenance. So I think there's things to, to engage or at least get a no and then try to figure something else out if they aren't interested. So those three rows are their property. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yes. You know, you know, during the days, they're not used. Weekends and evenings, you know, the, that lot's packed with the elks. I mean, all of the rows are. I don't know why they wouldn't work with that piece, especially if you're offering maintenance of the unit. And would we want to do a shared parking agreement? Would we essentially like to buy it so then it becomes part of the park? So I don't know if they would even sell it. But I mean, would you, or do you want to just try to figure out some kind of agreement? I think it's going to hurt to ask to buy it. Buy it. I see. Yeah. So what do we think about directing Kimberly to have a discussion about the possibility of purchase or shared yes. agreement, mm -hmm. keeping both options open? Sound good? Yes. Jim? Okay. Okay, excellent. We'll do that. Um, and then the last thing is the Enter um, Enterprise Zone Contribution Project application. I have started working with that. I have a um, meeting with LEDP tomorrow to really write that. I'd like to write it broadly. So um, we are part of the Enterprise Zone. Um, for an Enterprise Zone, you can have an actual project. So this is the building I'm doing, this is whatever or you can become an economic development organization, which they call um, you an inter or enterprise zone contribution project. So that would mean we could use this tool to, um, if we got donations, people could get 125% off um, their taxes as a write-off. If we got in-kind donations, you could get um, an additional 12% on your write-off. So I know that we've been talking about maybe some property acquisitions, there are also, in my mind, some um, some vacant storefronts that have maybe been vacant for a while, and if we could get maybe donated space to engage that, I think there's different ways we could use the tool, so it makes sense. And then Colin is going to show you some of our sponsorship opportunities for 2022. As a perfect week, you can come designated as this, people can get, if they use monetary donations, they can also get more of a tax rate. So I think there's lots of reasons to do that. Um, I just wanted to get a formal, I know we've talked about it before, but a formal motion to um, make this application and enter into this. So. Yeah, I see zero downside to entering this partnership. Right? This is just a tool that we want to leverage in my opinion. So, but what are your thoughts, board? Comments, questions? I think we're looking for a formalized motion. Oh, I think they uh, motion to move forward with Enterprise Zone Contribution Project application. Second. Seconded by Kirsten. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Approved. Awesome. That's all I have for that. All right. So next we have holiday update. Yeah. Just want to give you guys an update on what's going on with the holidays as they are rapidly approaching. Um, so. We are bringing back the Winter Passport. It's been very successful in the past. It's been a fourth year now. Uh, we did a bit of a brand refresh with uh, Brandon Lee, the design space, and the whole design on space. And they're awesome. And so, uh, do a kind of a logo refresh for that. And uh, we're working with them at the conference to get kind of sponsorship for some print notes. Um, so, that will kick off on November 12th, which is the second Friday. Uh, working on having businesses participate in kind of a holiday open house as we've done uh, I think in 2019 last year but, um, 
to kind of kick that off. And so they can say, well, you know, Friday, Saturday, have some um, decorations and different specials and stuff like that. So we'll be promoting that here shortly. Um, and then like Rick's Retail, who was formerly in our space, is now also in the Lizzie Longmont space. going to be having a, a, they're called the Miracle on 4th, so like a vendor market um, for that. We'll be there that Sunday. So lots going on to kick off the, uh, the holidays downtown that weekend. And then that'll kind of roll into small business weekend as we're, we're calling it. Um, we will have a tree lighting again on um, the 26th of November, Black Friday. That's gonna be in the 600 West parking lot. We're kind of rearranging the orientation of it and being creative with the use of space um, since the, that's still under construction with the spoke. Uh, but I think it should work out well. So um, doing that on 630, we've got a, local acapella group who's going to do some singing and um, I'm going to see and kind of touch on the Empire and the love one and all that stuff. And then um, have some small business Saturday the next day we'll have, I think we'll have some increased ice carvings um, and kind of activate more of the plaza um, through the back of it and maybe do some, you know, some kind of train or sleigh or something like that. Hopefully we're going to meet the artists here in the next couple of weeks and figure that all out. Um, and then Artist Sunday, um, Amy's working with a couple of local artists to try to put together some artist pop-ups within different businesses and kind of go artist Sunday as a kind of come to also shop for uh, support local artists. So um, that's that. And then after Small Business Weekend, we'll just kind of continue to market uh, downtown as your destination. Keep it local was kind of the, the theme that Brandon B helped, we helped come up with, which is great. Um, so she's going to spend three dollars locally instead of clicking a few buttons on her phone. So, um, but yeah, so we'll be, we're, we're going to um, do some holiday video refresh. Um, work on with Brandon B also on some different personas, so like you can shop for everyone downtown, um, you can shop for the, the infant or the, the tween or the you know, grandparents, whatever. So, work on some social media content with them on that. Um, we'll also do you know, just some uh, Google searching and marketing and advertising just to uh, promote downtown as a destination for shopping local. We've got our um, kind of kiosk posters that should be going soon, uh, new winter passport banners with the new logo. Posters for a small business weekend will be the direct mail piece again as we do each holiday season. I think we might increase that a bit. We should do about 10,000. We're going to do about 15,000 for that. And then uh, our businesses really liked the commemorative performance that we put together last year. And so they asked if we were doing something or would do something again. So we're exploring uh, working with either Tinker Mill and or a local uh, ceramics artist to create some events to, for businesses to give away and, um, probably a uh, server. So. Yeah. And we've also gotten, uh, for the first time ever, we got a title sponsor for the Winter Passport, our Country Bank. And also, our Country Bank is also a title sponsor for Small Business Saturday, which is great. And High Plains Bank is on board again with us for the goodie bags from the tree lighting. So, that's good. I would like to have a big thank you to Emily and Colin, who have been working really hard. Um, it's chasing down people <laughs> to make sure, are you in, are you out, what are you doing, and getting pricing and everything. Both of them. Yeah. Great job. Yes, yeah. 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 Security and everything else is there. You don't come in the door unless you can prove that you're vaccinated. And I'm pretty confident that people will be showing up that are not vaccinated, etc. And are we good to be prepared to deal with that kind of situation? Uh, and that type of thing. So, I mean, like, I'm all for it. I'm like, yes, let's do it. But I'm also on the other side. And so we just announced in our company that says either you're vaccinated by the state or the federal. Government guidelines, and we go up and pay through the lashes today. Yeah. And I'm thinking about going to turn to the future of Yeah, so I can go on kind of a general overview of the walk. Yeah, sure. Sure. So, yeah, so um, looking at hopefully hosting it on Saturday, uh, February 5th. And because of the mask mandate, it's currently in place, and we obviously can see it will still be in place at that time. The letter of the mask mandate says that um, singers or other performers of that nature are allowed to be unmasked uh, 
uh, as long as they maintain 12 feet of distance from the audience, as well as any other band members who are not in their household. So that obviously presents some challenges. <laughs> the types of venues, venues, right? Yeah, we've got maybe two venues that can handle that. So. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, we can't really do it outdoors because it's February. So um, there's, you know, maybe a few different options. Um, the the most appealing option, I mean, I don't think we're going to get many performers who are going to wear a mask singing. Um, we could explore that if need be um, and, and see what, what place is going to accommodate the space. But the way around the mask mandate um, is to, just like we did for this space, is we would do a fully vaccinated, uh, rather than fully vaccinated facility, be a fully vaccinated event. As Jim pointed out, that does raise some challenges. Um, basically, we have to verify that uh, we have to require everyone to be vaccinated. They do allow, you know, for medical exemptions, so 95% of people have to be fully vaccinated. Um, that includes performers, volunteers, staff, staff at the venues, and obviously ticket purchasers. We've talked through some different options for doing that. Um, everybody <coughs> always has to check in and either purchase or pick up their ticket, which the ticket is the little groundhog pin and so we thought you know obviously you can't bring three vaccine cards and get three wristbands or whatever so we figured everyone has to present their vaccine card and probably ID in person to get their wristband. We would do it as a wristband so you can't take it off or transfer it um, and then yeah each each volunteer or security at the bigger venues would be responsible for making sure that everybody has that wristband. If they don't have a wristband if they have a ticket they could you know present their vaccine card How do you measure there's, the five percent though? Yeah, I think you just go for five percent. There's already kind of the precedent that you have to have a ticket, right? right? And so it's just the check that you have to have your ticket and a wristband. Mm -hmm. And um, in, in the past, we did, we had venues that were also open to the public still, but that provided either a value item or you know, reserved space for ticket holders. Even after 2020s walkabout, right before COVID hit, we talked about going to more of a closed venue model anyway. Um, and, and so this would have to be completely closed venue. There's no public cloud. Um, How many venues? So in 2020, we had, I think, 15 or 16. Um, right now, that list is looking like it could be anywhere from 10 to 15, depending on how. I haven't spoken to all the venues about the fully vaccinated approach. I spoke to a couple and their own. Other sides of the spectrum, ones that absolutely not, and ones that, yeah, 100% we might not participate in, but we're fully vaccinated. So there's a conversation we'll have to have. But we'd like to try to do something, and it seems like this is about our only option. Have you spoken to the band? Um, we have. And um, where? You know, I don't think we've asked them if they would sing the past. Well, well I'm, I'm thinking more from the vaccinated standpoint. I mean, yeah. a lot of venues have gone this direction, so my guess is in order to get hired, maybe lots of. Yeah, and I'm sure there's probably be some bands in the same way. But is, is it a vaccine card or a negative COVID test? No, unfortunately. The Boulder County Board it's, it's just a vaccine. negative COVID test. It's, it's like not an alternative. A lot of the bigger events down yeah. the town are. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the Underground Music Showcase, the Westwood Music Showcase, were held earlier this year. They're similar to the third year they formats, and they did either vaccine card or negative COVID test. But that currently is not an option. I could also have a conversation with Boulder County Public Health and see. If they were to update this in the next five months, if they were going to either revise the, the 12 foot rule um, for the bandmates, because you know, most of the bands are probably back to practice indoors without masks anyway, um, could talk to them about the yeah, could, uh, could a negative test be an alternative. It's maybe a little bit more managed that way. Yeah, that's a, that's a, I mean, it's worth an ask. Yeah, so yeah. want to see, I guess, correct me if I'm wrong, but see what your thoughts were on, you know, if we have to be full of the full vaccinated men, um, you're going to see on that. And Thoughts from the board? I'm all for fully vaccinated. Yeah, I just back to from a, from a security perspective. Yeah, that's my biggest concern. Yeah, you don't want to get into a situation where it's confrontational, where you're, you're putting somebody at risk to say, "Listen, you're coming to the event versus not." I mean, that's that's my biggest concern with everything else. I almost think you might want paid security yeah. in that event. Yeah. I mean, that's so yeah. we talked about hiring a few security guards pre-COVID post 2020 event. Um, but yeah, that's certainly a conversation. Obviously add a cost to it, but yeah. Any other feedback? 
Can I add something? Um, Conroe Public Media is also a fully vaccinated facility, and we just had um, our first concert um, with that as a fully vaccinated facility on Friday. And what we did was we made everybody made it fully known that you have to show proof of vaccination um, when you show up. We set up a table outside our doors just to get that proof, and then let everybody in. And about 50% of the people who came were really thankful that we were doing this program and that everyone was fully vaccinated. So from a security standpoint, it was pretty safe. Yeah, we didn't have any issues. Yeah. 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 I just think about the, the thanks for sharing our, our, the bands that we participate in. I know a lot of their the groupies that, <laughs> that follow the significant bands and uh, I'm pretty confident that a lot of them are not vaccinated. So that's when I think in terms, they want to still come and participate in it. And, just trying to think of potential situations that could occur. Absolutely. And I think mean, I mean support of them, um, the fully vaccinated, but I do think it's really a conversation with Boulder County Public Health Absolutely. on today. <clears throat> yeah. And if we if we were fully vaccinated, we wouldn't be required to wear masks anyway, uh, because we'd be fully vaccinated. If they if they change the change the rules, then it would still be required to wear a mask because of the scenario. Which would also be doable, right? But I think yeah. it's nobody wants to be a muscle concert. Like, yeah. that just doesn't seem like any fun. Have a plan that allows some flexibility. <laughs> plan, right? Right. Yeah, that's the name of the game right now. And, you know, if the mask only family bands. Only family bands. Only bands will be together. Because roommates? Yeah. That's funny. Right. So, that's, that's awesome. All right. Thank you, Dr. Colin. Appreciate oh, it. And then the sponsorship package we just wanted to. Oh, of course. Please do that. So we had never had kind of a comprehensive sponsorship packet um, to, to do outreach to you know, businesses, especially the larger corporation side businesses outside downtown. Um, we've always just kind of been off outreach. And, and, uh, <coughs> so we're trying to reach out. This kind of started with the park with sponsorships and reaching out to others uh, in the surrounding community. We just thought um, the point we're at now with markets coming down and coming back up next year, it's worth it to really just put together a full, full package. I know Lee at the Chamber does a really great job designing a nice packet, so I tried to, <laughs> tried to make it a little bit more user-friendly than a Word document, but, um, so the first one is kind of a year-long creative district sponsorship, um, and just recognition on the kiosk posters, the, our event emails that go out twice a month, um, some recognition at different events, concerts, true lighting, et cetera, logo recognition on our creative district portion of the website, um, and then you'll see the part of the sponsorship option a little bit later, but they can combine that to be, uh, to get a price break on that, so. Obviously, the winter walkabout again, just various levels there, uh, trying to increase that sponsorship and that cost us some money on that. So, uh, a few different options for participating there. We do have TBK Banks been our title sponsor since the beginning. We just had a conversation with them, and they're on the board, just not positively about that. So, this title sponsorship is not listed, but it appears. Here, so that's that one. Um, and then, monthly arts and culture events. So, this is what has been second Fridays. <laughs> Um, you know, as coming out of the creative district committee talks about potentially shifting it to Saturdays to allow a little bit more flexibilities for families to attend, businesses that are already open, not having to stay open late. So, still having a conversation um, on what that looks like, but I um, want to you know, include this as an opportunity. So, title sponsorship for the entire year, love and inclusion on all the promo for that, um, or just like a one time project sponsor. You know, we have certain months, um, and we always worked on the music garden youth in May. Um, so, if there's kind of a bigger project or bigger program or something we want to put together one month uh, and be a one-time sponsor of that. So that's the it, they don't have a better name than that, but yeah. <laughs> they have a name again. The, the retail committee seems like Saturday would be better yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. They really, yeah. and yeah. you capitalize on that. Foot traffic is already there. Yeah. So. Clean and Green, Delray puts this together. I just included what she's done in the past. Um, I know Ace has been a big supporter in past year, so thank you for that. As well as some downtown restaurants. So. Few options there: title sponsor, food drink sponsor, event supplies, tools sponsor, etc. That should be coming back this spring. Here's the parklet sponsorship piece. Um, so double-sided um, signage on the parklet railing. Fast Signs has designed some really nice uh, brush aluminum signs. We had one printed for the month here. Did you get a picture of it? I I got a, hard, a difficult picture of it from my car. Yeah, we should just take a better one so we could show them what they would look like. Okay, okay. I actually have the sign in my office. Okay. I took it down today. 
Okay. Um, yeah, so it's about a foot tall, four and a half feet wide, uh, would be facing both directions, so two, two sides. Um, and that'll be out, obviously next year, maybe October. Um, and again, if we can buy that crew, it's your piece for a discount. Jack on Summer Concerts. Um, we, we talked about tweaking this a little bit, uh, and we did, so this is the updated version um, with the Beer Garden sponsorship. It's been, I think, like a 1500 in the past, but we talked about ice has been an issue since Breakers Grill closed, so we're talking about how do we bring ice in for the vendors? It's hard for them to all source the little ice. And David and Ben, um, we all asked if they could pay a little bit more. If we could do ice or something, we could talk about maybe having a beer garden sponsor cover that. Um, you know, easy way to do that, cover the costs is, is um, logo print and wristband because everybody has them and it's good for exposure. Um, obviously, exposure to print and digital, et cetera. Independent Financial has been our title sponsor. They signed up for a two year agreement last year and, and this coming year, so that's already spoken. I think you went to the Alright, here we go. Is that the conference last I think it was. Yep. So and then holidays, um, as I talked about, we kind of got some first time sponsors for the passport and sponsors on Saturday, which is awesome. Um, so these are the levels we received in that. Uh, the tree lighting, that would be a title sponsorship. Um, and yeah, and then artist Sunday just kind of supporting the, the different problems we can do a little bit. And then, um, as we'll go over here, different you know, opportunities arise uh, throughout the year. So just mentioning that, seeing if potential sponsors want to be notified or want to have those conversations about being a part of those bigger projects as they come up. So I think that is the yeah, and then just just give me a call. Call us. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's about it. I'm trying to get together for sponsors. Yeah. So any questions or feedback or suggestions? So my comment is this is excellent work. I mean, yeah, it's very clean, well presented. I mean, it's it's been done right. And so I'm just like, that's a lot of sponsorship. That's a <laughs> yeah. lot of work oh, that our small team does. So I mean, well done. I mean, that is just fantastic. If anyone who knows anyone they want to give this to you or <laughs> you know introduce this concept one, to, we would love to do that. And what is not on there is Miss um, Emily is. She gets amazing in-kind sponsorships, and um, it's oh, always words. yeah, she's <laughs> fantastic at that. So That's I don't want that to go unrecognized on here. Um, that is her jam, so we really appreciate that too. Okay, great. We just want to make sure any thoughts or comments before we send it out. Mass. Yeah, good work. I would only go through and say, can I raise this? Yeah. <laughs> Just look through it one more time and say, oh, can, can I charge more for this? And well, I like the two year commitment. Like, that's awesome that you have that yeah. independence yeah. two years at a time. That's, yeah. yeah, yeah it makes it so much easier. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. Is that the final form? Oh, we haven't set it up. Yeah. Just kidding. We don't get approval on that, do we? No, okay. just do what it is. Okay, cool. All right, good stuff. On to old business, property annexation discussion. Property annexation. As you know, we had a request from 721 Main to annex into the DBA, and um, the board had asked us to kind of reach out to other properties in that area. We did send out um, mailings to the property owners. The property owners aren't necessarily the boots on the ground in the property, so we sent it out. Um, and. Did not hear from anyone. Did not hear from anyone that had any papers other than that 721 main. Um, I think the thing that's most important to know is it has to be contiguous, so we couldn't jump like the guy four doors up, one and two, but not next door. So, um, so if you want me to continue to try to follow up more with folks, I can, um, or I don't have to. Um, and then Paul reached out to me, and Paul is here, and I have information in the board packet. He is the owner of 33 Pratt Street, and I'm going to pull up our map real quick to show where your property is, Paul. But if you want to, well, since you're here, if you want to talk a little bit about why you want to be in the DA or what you're thinking, um, that would be great. 
Well, I, I've, I've um, had the opportunity to watch LDEA over the last years, and great things have happened. And, and uh, it just seems to me that uh, being part of it is, is important from connectivity, from getting feedback on ideas that I might have, or, you know, good, bad, indifferent. Um, so um, it, I think it's a, 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 an extraordinary group and make great strides and everything's done professionally and I want to be part of it if you'll let me. <laughs> How's that? That's great. That's great. Um, you know what I'm going to we can go grab the big map out of my office. Um, so uh, Paul's property, if you come over Pratt Parkway, immediately on the right where the Warrior Playground is, where the old cheese and quarters used to be, oh, yeah. you remember that building? So that is the building that we're talking about. And so if you look at our handy dandy map, here is Pratt Parkway, and here is First Avenue. So if you just go across, this is his property here. So you could just pick it up across the street and go down and over it. And that's continuous. And that is continuous. <laughs> yes. I, I believe so. I would have to take it to uh, the planners, but yes, as I read that, that is the area. So, so what does that process look like? Can you kind of walk the board through what, you know, if we approve adding 33 credits, so like what it goes to zoning, does it have to have council approval? Can you kind of walk us through what's that look like? Yes, so we would need to get probably a formal petition or something for those property owners to sign. Um, hopefully we can get approval from this board today if you're interested in moving forward with those two. I'll take it to planning. We'll have to do a ordinance. Um, uh, we'll have to revise the ordinance to change our boundaries. So really the annexation is just about formal motions to formally change the DEA boundaries. Um, and so it would have to go to planning and zoning commission first and they would have to make a recommendation to city council and then it would go to city council and then formally change those boundaries. So. No, I don't really see any. I mean, obviously, um, since the property owners requested it, it's, it's not, you know, there's no um, question of whether people really want to be involved. Um, TIF will be generated, but it's really only the 10 more years. We only have 10 more years of our TIF, and that TIF is really only at about 50% of those taxing bodies. So. Um, from time to time, annexations, when you take a huge swath of land that's taking out a lot of money to other um, entities, there's been some opposition, but I think these are fairly small. The base of tax increment that's generated will be what they are today, and so there really isn't a huge opportunity to, to see um, a lot of reduction in other taxing bodies. And that would be the only reason why I think there would be, it wouldn't matter to the adjacent property owners. Both of these property owners understand the mill levy, so there's no question there. Um, so, but I have been blindsided before, but <laughs> the way I look at it right now, I can't see of any reason why people would want to visit. Well, there's a lot of potential upside in that area, too, for improvement. Yeah. Absolutely. So I don't see anything bad about it at all. Absolutely. So what if we approve of this annexation and then a couple weeks later we have an adjacent property that is interested in joining so would that create com issues to go back to zoning and make adjustments no i mean i mean it's it's just obviously more work for the staff it's easier to kind of do them at once but no and i think other dda's take one-offs all the time as they come and they convince someone so it's and i honestly feel like once we get the process dialed in, then it'll just kind of become rote and it's somewhat formality. But um, we have all the documentation from when um, Roosevelt Park was annexed in. And so uh, Brian Schumacher already pulled all that up and has all the templates and that kind of thing. So it should be okay. I think to also answer your question about whether you should continue to contact everyone, I don't think you need to. 
I think you've already done it. Okay. Let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. And once this happens, I'm sure they'll be contacted you. Yeah. So. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. You guys all agree? Mm -hmm. All right. So we're looking for a motion. Move to I move to include 33 Pratt Street into the annexation and continue moving forward with any northern properties that express interest. Second. All right. It's a motion made by Kirsten, seconded by Jim. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Motion carries. I'll right. let you know right. what I mean. Welcome. Yeah. Signatures yeah. and first step. Yeah, yeah. things Welcome. like that. But you're 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 this far. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Sure. Thanks, Paul. All right. Next, we have wayfinding plan. Um, so I wanted to run through this quickly. I know there were two <coughs> very long wayfinding plans that were in your packet. The first one that I really want to talk about is the one that is the design intent, kind of what they're going to look like. Um, and we've already given some feedback, so um, I'll kind of let you know what we have said as well. Um, so these are the proposed gateways for, uh, you know, 66 and Ken Pratt and that type of thing. So these would be as you're coming into town. Then, I'm not going to go way over the city ones because these are just different options that no one likes. Um, and that's just kind of an idea of what it would look like for scale. Kind of see the cars. Um, that's out there where that little rock is with the mountain. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, um, imagine if you're a car going you know, 50 miles an hour, 55 miles an hour. These would be the directionals, so as you're coming up, you kind of know what choices that you need to be making. You can see there what that would look like. These are the, what do we call these? They're directionals, so these are, you're kind of more of a, 25 to 35 mile an hour street. You can kind of see a little bit more context. So these would be those as you're moving along. This is one of those living there. And then these are what they call the trailblazers. So as you're getting closer into your destination, it's just that kind of, yep, you're still on the right track. This is one that they were thinking for downtown. Um, to kind of, we did ask that they could incorporate some of our branding. I think what we would look at, because for this sign to make sense, it's not our red logo, it's really the peach of the city logo, which I don't think anyone was too keen on. It reminds me of so, Rocco's. Yeah. Not fan. Yeah. So, uh. I said, I'm going to Right? You tell oh, them. Yeah. Kirsten, you tell them. It's going to be like. <laughs> I feel like I'm in the middle of a war zone. <laughs> um, so we talked about really doing just the one color logo here. So not introducing a peach color into our logo, of which isn't a piece part of our logo anyway. Um, you can kind of see how those look. Environment. So this comes to our kind of downtown suite of things. These are the downtown gateways. So what you can see is they really used, instead of using the pattern on the city logo, they've used the pattern that we have on our creative district logo. Um, we could use this, or we usually use it, if you kind of look at um, the top of like your agenda, we usually cut the star in half. So we might want to really look at options where we kind of cut that star in half maybe or, or something like that. But these are the options that we have. Again, um, not sure that I love the peach um, on that. So we would maybe look to, um, to kind of change the coloring. It does have a, um, a brick base, which I like. Um, one of the maintenance folks says they don't know how well the brick and mortar would hold up, but I don't think it's held up on 
the buildings for 150 years. So I think that it would probably be okay if we did it. Um, and I think he thought it was much more street level and these will be, and so I think once we maybe explain, no, these won't be kind of with all the salt and everything, these will be somewhere else, then hopefully that would change. And so our red would match the brick. Our red would match the brick. And maybe on this we can do the red. So I have a few questions into them, but they also put together the, um, we are not putting it in the median. And I know that was our goal, but um, it just seems like maybe not the, the wisest move. So we'll probably look to cite them either one on either side or, or something like that. Um, and then this is another alternative. Ooh. Yeah, do you like that better? Yeah. Kind of oh, yeah. I like the red. Just also, I think it's red. also less likely to look dated quickly. Mm -hmm. I think the peach. Okay. Um, Looks like faded red. It's too faded. Yeah. Back it's like faded red. <laughs> you know, at first I wasn't sure about this, but the more I keep looking at this, I actually do like the red and black better with the, the silver. The first one. Mm -hmm. The second one is very hard to read. Yeah. For some reason, I don't know why. Okay. Contrast. So maybe the first one. I mean, this first one, not the first one. Okay. Yeah. So these are the directional signs that would be within downtown. And we did do the cutout downtown branding on them, which I think looks really nice. We had talked about instead of having the city logo cut out at the top using a splice of our uh, you know just as a different geometric pattern and i think that um the wayfinding consultant like that as a, a you know as an identity thing so we will get new drafts looking at that but we would continue with because we really want to have our own little nod to our character but we want to integrate with the city wide so it would still be the blue with the white and then each, but then we would take our other elements on to the sign. And the bases really mimic the bases that we have now, so I think that'll look really nice. Um, they showed it in all different colors, of which none seem to work as well as just having the full metal yeah. consistency. So they just wanted to show us options, but I think that's good. So the back of the signs, um, they showed a, a number of different options of what we can do. Um, anyone have a, a thought on what they like? Well, we all know how I feel about the peach, so right. I, I like the non colored ones. The second to the left. Me too! I like that's that's what I like too. But I would love to see if we could put just the downtown in all black underneath there, like it is. You know what I mean? And so it says that with downtown. Um, and I really think if we go with the uh, secondary gateways that we talked about, that for those, like I think these would look really nice. And I think you're absolutely right. I love color, but I think the lack of color will make these more um, timeless. Yeah. Everyone like that one? Is that a good choice? Okay. Um, so that's kind of how they'll look in the atmosphere. It's going to be hard to place these, to be honest. I mean, we have wonderful trees, but trying to place these in, in places where they'll be seen um, will be a challenge. But we can look at that. Um, these are, again, just those trailblazers if you're trying to look at, at certain things. They probably will put them on the parks. So the street signs, um, I'm not sure what these will actually look like. There's nowhere that has street signs like this except for the downtown area. Um, but these don't match what they have in the rest of the city. So I think they wanted them to kind of go back and, and look at what this would look like. Um, but if we did, I think no one liked the full circle, like over here, it was just, way too much. Um, do you all, if, if we kept along this line, do you all like option one or two better? Option one. One. Option one. 
It's I know. Um, I'm, I'm, you, you. Yeah, I'm I, I, I agree, actually. Um, actually, what's that look like? So these are exciting. These are the parking trailblazer signs, which we would love to see these directing people to parking. Um, these will are just the hey you're along the right track. Although there is actually no parking that way, um, they're just showing them on a sign. Oh god, don't put one there. Uh, I know. Uh, you need to get that out. There is no don't parking. Show that to anybody. Don't. Yeah. Yeah. But this is, I think, the best sign in the system because we really have needed to educate people oh, yeah. about parking. So these would be at the um, front of the lots that you would know it's public parking it would have a name that we always call it names that no one quite know what we're talking about so it'll have the name and then it will say free time limited two hours monday through friday and then unlimited weekends and holidays these are all changeable panels okay. so if in the future we ever have to change our timing or implement you know pay parking or something like that all of these will be changeable panels but um, I think this looks really great. We did share this with the folks at the Spoke on Kaufman and told them that we really would like to have signage around this. And as they are uh, doing their signage, they actually requested that we give them our P, the icon of this P, and our, our um, fonts and that type of thing so they can also integrate into the public system, which is great. So I'll send them along this as we move forward. So Kim, I have one question as far as from a technology perspective. I don't know what you think is, is there anything from a public parking perspective that we're looking at that would be able to tell people what's available parking wise? And the reason I say that is because people come in, they drive, they drive through, no, nothing, and they leave. It, there's no spot available. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know that I'm thinking in terms of just a parking garage or whatever that says, oh, by the way, there are X number of spaces still available as you come in. Is there any forward thinking in that regard long term? I think that that model is probably somewhat easier with paid parking because then you're having a record of who's there and who's not. However, we did fund um, in the budget that just got passed yesterday $100,000 for those cameras that are going to be in the parking lots and the alleyways. So. Um, I think the honest answer is I have no idea, but <laughs> since we're having those cameras, I don't know if there's a way to do something like that, but some of that infrastructure would be there and we could grow. I think you make a fantastic point though. I wonder if there's any way to add to this sign or to add like additional parking, parking one block either yeah, way. Yeah. 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 They come in behind the pump house. It's full, so they, they don't know where to go. Yeah, there's, there's a whole parking lot down the street. Right. Right. Right That's where they all go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all <laughs> eight. <laughs> it's all eight. It's <laughs> in there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, but that's something that we might be able to address, even just the additional parking. That's a that's a great point. So let me um, ask that and put that into our feedback. Yeah, or even run across the road. Exactly. Same business. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, You're right. It is a big sign, so there might be. Yeah. Some give and pee. Yeah. Or we could just get rid of that peach stripe. <laughs> <laughs> I like what you think. Yeah. See. You know. Um, there we go, kind of how it would look in the environment. I'd, I'd like to actually see if you just put it on the pole that's behind there. <laughs> anyway, nothing else, so um, relocate that pole maybe so we can look into that. So this is some of their just kind of markers for their facilities that the city has decided on some tweaks. Um, and then, that's not what I want. This is our kiosk. It is double-sided. Um, some things that I, I, I'm not 
I'm not like 100% there yet, you know. Um, I don't think we would want the blue, like the blue doesn't make sense for these kiosks, it should probably just be black. We would change the top to our branding. Um, they envision a map element on one side and then posters that we can switch out on the other. We would put our logo at the bottom right now. They have the city logo placed in there. Um, Do they have to put a frame, like the blue or whatever, or can it all just be silver or whatever? That's a great question. Kind of like the backs of those. This is horrible placement. We would never put it here. I'm not quite sure why it's there, but uh, I know. Well, that's a hard no on that. But um, so we would have to put it over somewhere. You know, the problem with how they're situated now is they truly are one-sided kiosks, right? So going to the back around them. Um, I had sent them a series of questions because I'm not sure if they're lit. I'm not sure, you know, those other things. Um, I liked having them lit so you could really see them at night and make them look functional. Um, however, maybe we could have one of each because if we did want to add them in different parts that don't have electric, we could we could do that as well. So um, I have a list of those questions into them, so I will let you know. Um, they did uh, say that pattern crosswalks would be great. Um, probably not this pattern, but. Um, pattern crosswalks would be great as an identity element. Um, I know that we have not seen eye to eye with the traffic engineer on some of those things. Um, I would not want to paint crosswalks on Main Street. I think that would not make sense because of just the wear and tear. There is a um, product called Thermoplast that you can put on, which is kind of how they put the road striping that you can't have custom made. Um, but I think it's a good conversation starter for what that would look like. I would love to see it less on Main Street and more on Kaufman, Kimbark, the avenues and, and that type of thing as a circulation measure. Um, but I think that's something that we can look at. Is that thermoplast like the seasons up north? You know, um, yes and no. no. Thermoplast is actually like a you know how when they even like just put those stripes on it's it's that kind okay. of thing um that was a special asphalt treatment but that's held up amazing yeah it's also very low traffic yes so i think that's it's kind of a little rubber in the heat it melted to the yeah. surface and then this here would be um, our interpretive um, kiosks and panels for our historic tours and for st stephen's plaza and that kind of thing again in downtown, it would probably change to our creative district branding up here, but I think that's a nice, simple solution to those um, that we need. So I wanted to just run through this and see if anyone had any, um, I mean, thank you for the comments along the way, but anything, strong feelings one way or another, anything else you want us to consider, to know? Will we ever get it done? Yeah. <laughs> we will, yes. Um, My life has? I believe we will. Uh, I think once this plan is adopted and done, this is much more affordable options, um, much more practical options than the first ones that we have. We do still have money in our budget to implement some of our signage, so if nothing else, I think there'll be signage around here. Um, I think if you heard me say once, I said a thousand times how disappointed I was that there wasn't money in the city budget for this. I believe someone told me that they ended up putting about $50,000 just for a start. So this is a start. And then we can zoom on that. That's what? Okay. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I, I'm feeling much more optimistic. Um, and I think the first ones that will go in that we have complete control over and everything are the parking right and start building the system out from there but i think that's a good start um, so the city would adopt the look and then we would so we're not at risk of proceeding and having them then go back and come up with a different look correct okay correct um yes correct they also, they're, um, so why I feel very confident that this will become a citywide system is their parks department is 
working with the same consultant and the same system to okay. do a sign package from top to bottom. And as they sign new parks and as they sign new things, all of these signs will be happening as they replace these civic civic center signs. So they already have places that they will implement them. I think what you won't see is a broad taking down every sign we have and everything's going to have this new look. Because and, and no city does that, right? It takes a lot of money and time. But uh, I'm feeling much more confident that this is going to be a widely adopted as we get closer into it. People are seeing this and understanding it. So, um, only you want to after one of their storms that do happen to them. Yeah. yeah. They're gone. Yeah. And then, is there, I mean, this is not huge important, but I just thought about it when I saw that historic thing. Is there, we can add signs like the JC Penn building, the little rock crusher, the mill, so people understand what these things are. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, a couple things um, around that sign in particular is um, will it be in Spanish, too? Um, I didn't see any of that throughout any sign, so that's something to consider. Mm -hmm. I know there's limited space and everything, a lot of the signs are going to be really practical, but that one definitely would be something mm -hmm. to consider. And then I mentioned earlier to you about the Front Range Community College, and that's definitely part of this. I just wanted to make sure that, that that's part of the signage. But uh, so, I mean, what's the next steps with this? So, um, the other thing is. I don't, and I think maybe we don't want to go through it today, but if you have time to look in the packet, we put in kind of the travel paths and where they thought key signage should go and that type of thing. I would really encourage folks to look through that. And if you have any um, any feedback or you think, I, why would, this doesn't make sense or this is a, they missed the mark on this, please let me know. Um, I think the next step is, um, you know, I'll kind of say, yes, our board is willing to move forward with this. They're, they're happy with it. Here's a few tweaks that we wanted to see. Um, we will see that new um, design inspiration with the comments that we've asked for. I think the comments were just due last week, so we put in most of those. We can still add these other ones. Um, and then that package will come back. I'm trying, I think it does have to be accepted by council, um, but I think we're probably a month and a half away from that. And then, we, because we have money in our budget already, once we get the siting and the, um, they'll give us construction bid plans. So we can send those to a fabricator that they'll know exactly all of the specs and that type of thing. And then we'll be able to start getting some real pricing. And then say of this hunk of money that we put into the signing, which signs are most important for us, which ones do we want to put in for our So. It's all the All right, sounds good. Any other comments for the board at this point? Besides just slap a Denver Bronco logo on some of these and look great. Um, all right. All right, um, any other comments? All right, seeing none, we're going to financial update. Yeah, you know, finances are looking good. Um, they were in your packet, we are, um, on track or a little below uh, where our projections are. Our tip came in strong, so if there's any questions, through September, yeah, it should be good. Some of them. We are spending a lot of holiday-esque money, so some of that will catch up. But good, good returns, we hope. All right, questions? Seeing no questions on finances, one my creative district update. Do you want to give a quick update? Sure. Okay. Amy? Yeah. Uh, two things to really update. Um, last week we had our first outreach event, which we're coming from families. It went really well. We had four art stations to cultivate creativity in um, some of the school kids. There were about 40 that attended. Um, it was really great. It was a good first partnership with them. And then next month, we are going to be part of Denver Arts Week. It'll be November 11th to 14th. Um, and that is something we're going to be on a calendar for the entire Denver Metro, which is really great. That's it for the Long Museum. Any questions? Anything else? 
I mean, it's done a great job, and that outreach event was fantastic. And it's really our kind of first step in um, really engaging maybe populations that don't come down here as much, and um, really um, starting with the students. And I think that that Amy did a fantastic job. Um, we are working with art and public places right now on window murals again, some places where we kind of have some gaps in our footprint and try and get some artists to do some window murals. So that call will be going out um, amongst some of the other things. And in our creative district board meeting, we will be um, proposing and hopefully adopting a non-discrimination statement um, that we then will bring to this board um, for hopefully your adoption as well. So those are kind of some of those SCFD pieces that we wanted to put together um, and formalize in the future. So, um, great job, Amy. Appreciate it. All right, sounds good. Um, executive director report. Okay, um, so the Dickens patio, which has been this very interesting um, animal that is kind of attached to the side of the building. No one is quite sure how it got there, who put it there, who put brick on it or whatever. Um, a few months ago, the, um, the anchors that held the brick onto the concrete wall uh, were compromised. So most of the concrete wall, or most of the brick wall, I'm sorry, fell right onto the sidewalk in one large piece. That's right. <laughs> so we've got that cleaned up. And um, we really are, are questioning, you know, whose responsibility is this? So we started, um, there's no formal documentation. We looked up um, pictures in the historic archives. It is so nice to have the historic archives. And there has been a concrete raised sidewalk is what I would call it, because, you know, the doorways to that building are not that great with the sidewalk. So there has been a concrete just kind of raised sidewalk since the 50s. We can see it like dating back to our best guess is that in um, the early 80s, someone did a beautification and put the brick on it and that type of thing. And that was when it became, is it city right away? Is it PA? Is it whoever? And how have we been kind of maintaining this? Today, we had a phone call with the property owner and um, Timber from Parks. We did meet with city and city attorney's office to say, you know, it's in your right away. So what do we think? And um, I think they said, yeah, you know, obviously it's it's kind of a raised sidewalk type of thing, and we have to keep that um, keep access to those buildings. However, we don't have to do brick embellishments and that kind of thing. And the bricks, are, although beautiful, um, on the actual walking surface, they have been a tripping hazard as they kind of you know it means those have been a little bit harder. And the bricks on the steps are impossible. So that's as you're taking kegs up there and sound equipment and everything, those continue to get compromised. Um, a couple of the things that we're looking at. So I think what the city is willing to do is um, get all the brick taken off, investigate the integrity of the concrete underneath, um, fix the concrete and do a, um, for lack of better words, you know, the polished concrete that the breweries and everything, but it won't be polished slippery, right? They'll have a grit to it, but it'll kind of have that look at the top, replace all the steps, make sure that the railing is still secure. Um, we did talk to the property owner about his desire. Does, did he want brick on it? If he does, he can put it on at his expense and then he can maintain it at his expense. Um, I did reach out to Art in Public Places and I said, hey, we have this wall. Is there something that you can do to it? And um, the director there is uh, willing to talk to the commission about doing a tile mosaic on the whole wall. And the parks folks said that they, um, once they fix it, that that would be fine, that you could put that on kind of this this side. So um, a lot of moving pieces. Um, we are going to meet with the property owner on site next week so we can really kind of look at it and see what they're going to do and see what his desires are. I would like to continue to work with Art and Public Places because um, I do think when you come up the hill, the brick, at least the the brick wrap had a nice presence. If it was a mosaic, it'd be a nice presence. If it was just a concrete raised sidewalk, I think we would really lose a little bit of the character that we've tried to build. Um, we did put out there that we do have our grant, our facade grant. So if they wanted to do something that they could kind of mail the, the, the facade grant. So I wanted to just kind of keep you up to date. Um, I think if worst case scenario, 
property owner says, I don't want to do anything. AIPP says, I don't want to do anything. The city's not going to do anything. We might come back and have a conversation to say, do we want to do something to kind of keep that character? Um, but hopefully that's... So, but the property owner utilizes the sidewalk for seating, right? And then I see they advertise, you know, banners on the side. So they got to have some skin in the game, right? Like this one. Or remove their banners. That's right. Absolutely. And they can't use it to, um, to seat anybody. Well, they have a um, business extension in the right of way, like most other businesses have, to be okay. able to put tables on the right That's way. Fine. So they do pay that permit fee. And um, because if it's technically a raised sidewalk, but the banners, I totally get. And I think he's, I mean, from the conversation today, I think he's absolutely willing to, to probably do something, but he just wants to get like a little bit of more information. Um, I actually feel like I might discourage him from putting the brick back on the patio because I just think that's a nightmare and you don't really see that. And if you can do those polished concrete looks right now look pretty nice. So if we can do that, um, it's really just that character around the, the street level that I'm most worried about. Uh, the, um, I asked parks and the existing railing is very stable and it's still, you know, anchored in the concrete. So they're just gonna repaint that so the railing will stay the same. Um, so my biggest concern is kind of the, the wrap around and I hope it can be AIPP and maybe if it is, if they have a funding gap, maybe if the property owner could chip in and we can chip in with our facade grant. Who's responsible for the yeah. After that, um, that's been the issue since the fifties. So <coughs> there's got to be some kind of agreement. Well, the city will maintain the the concrete raised sidewalk. So, um, so if it's just that, then the city will continue to maintain that. If he adds any embellishments on it, then he has to maintain. And if AIPP does the mosaic, then AIPP as part of their thing is they maintain it, the mosaic. So let me ask you this. Is there, will there be some kind of an understanding and agreement in place with the property owner this time going forward? Because yes. it's going to come back. There's no reason why you can't put these banners up, you know, advertise at will because there's nothing in writing. Yeah. It's preventing Yes. Okay. And it looks awful. So we will definitely have an agreement with the okay. city before we do it. So it would be a shame to put a mosaic there. That's right. And then, yeah. Cover it the sun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Um, okay. So I just wanted to let you know that. Um, we do have a survey out through um, CU Boulder, um, and it's uh, we've had about seventy. Well, last time I checked, this was a week. We had 75 people that filled it out. We really would like to have 300 or more people fill that out. Um, and so I just wanted to throw that out there. If you all have people you can forward it to or encourage businesses to forward it or to get different perspectives. Um, and to me, the survey is just as important to people that come down here as people who don't because we'd like to know why they don't or what we could do to make them decide to come down here. Um, I know. Uh, Monument Leader had some information out on it. We put it in a lot of city things. Um, one of the students is coming down to hand out candy at the trick or treat parade and hand out little QR codes. So hopefully people will go back and get the survey. So take out what I can. Um, yeah, we've got to get some more in the next couple of days. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I don't have that yeah. So when is the deadline for the survey? Uh, we're going to keep it open probably um, through December, actually. Uh, it, and it was also listed in the um, City of Longmont Utility Bills, so um, it did get mailed to anyone who still gets a paper utility bill. So. Does it get a credit set? Yeah. Yes. Um, so, that is what I had for my report, unless you have questions about the staff report yet. Questions for Kimberly? Seeing none. All right, on to items from the staff. Anything to add? So we know the Broncos Chiefs and the Patriots are all three and four. So oh, that's right. right. Misery was terrible. <laughs> we played the Giants on Monday night, so that should be a good We should be well. Right. Have a good. <laughs> 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 
All right, that's not going to be in the minutes. So. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, next we have board member comments. Jim, what do you have for us? I have a question. Okay. Following the accident that took place yes. on the street, mm -hmm. what's happening with the media? The reason I ask that, are they taking that, the rest of the tree out? It's a like a mm -hmm. sword sticking up in the air, wait for somebody to trip and fall on it and get, you know, but any word on what's happening with that? No, but I can find out. Um, I can ask. I don't know. Hopefully. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's Delray. Oh. It's Delray. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Are we asking about the trees in the five hundred block meeting? Yes. That got hit. Yep. Everything that yeah. was taken out. I mean, I, I know. To, I come to Forest Street this week and. Um, they do want to take those out in a couple of weeks. They wanted to wait till we were done with our packet removals. So most likely in mid-November, hopefully they will come out as well as some on the 300 meetings too. Great, thank you, Joey. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> like this voice, she's talking about an hour. I thought she hung up. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, I have to say that was a very interesting um, day for me. I got a call at 2.30 in the morning and they said, um, someone hit your pole. We need you to come out and take care of it. I said, well, not quite sure what I can do right now at 2.30 in the morning, but I'll take care of it in the morning. And they called me back at 5 and they said, yep, no, we need you to come down here. So I came down and um, I said, I didn't even quite know that this was my job to take care of. And so we got a hold of Rose Electric and they were able to take it down. And, um, hmm. So in the poll, um, it's purely decorative. I thought it actually served some kind of purpose, but it does not. Um, Can you really? Yes. <laughs> I just got a poll from Rose, so the, the main poll is not salvageable, but the R's are. At a uh, cost of $27,000. Wow. <laughs> wow. So the risk management and insurance, and I think they said the person didn't have insurance, but I don't know if we still have any other way to claim that cost. Yikes. Okay. Wow. Um, well, we do have an infrastructure replacement fund, but that seems like a lot. So. So, um, so yes, we were continuing to figure out ways to get that cleaned up. Sure. Anything else, Jim? Jeez. All right, Wes. <laughs> Joe? No? Nothing? Nothing? Kirsten? All right, nothing for me. Um, make a motion to adjourn. Okay, so motion by Wes, seconded by Joe. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a great night. Yeah. Bye, Dory. Thank you. Oh,